Hey, welcome to this episode of Fresh Word. Looking at John chapter 6, I want to bring to you a couple of verses that really stand out to me, and I think they will to you as well. It says this, Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountains by himself alone. First of all, let me just cut to the chase. You don't make Jesus anything. He is who he is, right? He's a savior. That's what he wants to be in our, in our lives. Savior. He died for the sins of the world that he might be our savior. They wanted a king to take over the Roman rule. I know we want a lot of change to go on in the world today, but the change needs to begin right here. And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to be the savior of the world. Now, what's interesting here is he says, now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea and got in the boat and went to the uh, sea towards Capernaum. And it was already dark and Jesus had not uh, come to them. What's interesting is uh, Luke also records the same passage, gives us a little more detail. And it says that Jesus commanded the disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. He said, I'll meet you over there. That was the promise of God. Look, I want to be alone, more or less, is, is what I believe is going on in his mind. And um, you know what? I'll meet you guys on the other side. There's a lot going on. Probably want to clear his mind a little bit. And uh, I'll catch up with you later. So he commands him, you go get in the boat and go to the other side. And in Luke's gospel, it says immediately Jesus made them, commanded them, the disciples, to get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While the, or while the multitudes were away. And so you see this, this thing where Jesus has this plan in mind, at least for himself, that if I can just get away, I'll catch up with you. Here's the, here's the neat thing. Sometimes Jesus will ask us to do things, go to the other side for the disciples. And in the midst of what we're promised to catch up with Jesus or to meet him, the fulfillment of the end of what he said, we lose track of that when the battle becomes a little rough in between here and there. And, and I think that's what you see here because it says the seas, going back to John's gospel, chapter six, then the seas arose because a great wind was blowing and for they had rowed about for three or four miles and they, uh, they saw Jesus walking on a sea and drawing near the boat, they cried out because they were afraid. Here's the thing. There might be times when things get a little rough, even though Jesus asks us to do things or commands us. Hey, I want you to go here. I want you to do this. And we're thinking, okay, it ought to be easy. Yeah, Jesus told me to do it. But then when things get tough, we realize, uh-oh, now what? And it may be even unbearably tough to where we're like going, whoa, what now? But if you remember in Luke's um, rendition of this um, story, that he told Peter to come out and walk, come out and meet him. And then you think about that. In the midst of the storms, all Jesus wants to do is meet with his people. You know, we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to freak out. And sometimes it takes faith, right, that Peter would walk on the water. And I, I think this, God is always trying to get the attention of his people. In the Old Testament, we see it going through the book of Isaiah or Jeremiah, where Jeremiah is constantly saying, constantly saying the word of the Lord from Jeremiah given to the people so they might know their state and their state is like tempestuous winds. They've caused them, by the way, these winds and these storms in their lives. But then all of a sudden, the Lord says, return to me or come to me. You know, it's like, I know the mess that you made, but I want you to come to me. Or I know the mess that you're in, come to me. And whether it's a self-inflicted uh, wound or storm that we've caused ourselves, or it's storms around us, God cares so deeply for us that he wants to meet with us. He doesn't want us to handle it on our own, go it on our own, or anything like that. He says, hey, look, come to me. And have faith that whatever he asks us to do, it's gonna come to pass. By the way, the, the winds did cease at his word, the storms did calm down, and they met him on the other side, there they were. And I think for you and I, I have to often uh, keep in mind for myself that, you know what, uh, you know, I, I might be going through a rough time, but God's got this. Whether it's physically, God's still got this. He wants me to come with my attitude, or maybe a, a sour attitude, even though you're going through some difficult times. And he says, you know what? I want to meet you here. We just walk out in faith and trust me because I'm going to lead you through this. 
Or maybe it might be your finances with the inflation, you know, going on. Or it could be, you know, job changes or whatever the case may be. Relational storms in marriages and in life. Come to Jesus and bring it to Jesus and meet him in the midst of the storm. Let's try and figure it out. And then, you know, all of a sudden, oh, here it is. You know, I got to figure it out, Jesus. Thank you. Come to him and say, Lord, could you figure this out for me? Could you speak to the situation? Could you give me peace in the midst of the storm? And that's what he wants us to do. Listen, we know that when we turn our cares, or the Bible says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for us. And when we know when we've done that, we've cast our cares upon him, is when in return we have the peace that surpasses all understanding. A lot of times we'll cast things and our cares upon him, but we'll bring them back with us. You know, so it's like we're doing we, what we call our due diligence, but we really are not free of it. So casting with the idea of bringing nothing back, and, and in the disciples it was to have faith to trust him. And all of a sudden it says in John's Gospel again, then they willingly received him into the boat, immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. You know, a lot of times I think it's because Jesus just wants our attention. Things are happening in our lives and he just wants us to fix our eyes back on him. And when we do that, oh man, the, the, the calms, the storms, they just seem to just ease up. Just put your attention on the Lord. You know, you're walking with Jesus. He loves you. He cares for you. And you and I get to walk with him and we get to uh, trust in him. But have faith. Have faith that he'll walk you through it as we call upon him. But don't ever forget to call upon the Lord. Invite him into your storm. God bless you guys. Have a good day. Hey guys, join us weekly as we come to you, hopefully bringing you a fresh word, a perspective on things or straight from his word, which is so powerful. So see you next week and stay in love with God. And may the word of God penetrate your hearts. God bless you guys.